Okay, so detention time. Detention time is the amount of time that a, uh, an amount of water will spend inside of a tank before it leaves. Because remember, we have a constant flow coming in. So eventually that water's got to exit the tank. So detention time is how long will that amount of water stay in the tank before it leaves. And uh, they want to find the detention time in hours. And uh, the formula for detention time in hours is volume in gallons, so the volume of the tank, divided by the flow in gallons per day, times 24 hours per day. Now remember what I said earlier, anytime you have a division and you have a gallon and a gallon or a cubic foot and a cubic foot, those cancel each other out. So when I divide gallons by gallons, what stays is this day. So if I were to not multiply it by 24 hours per day, I would have the detention time in days. But since they want it in hours, I need to multiply it by 24 hours per day because that's how many hours are in a day. So uh, let's, let's write this all out. So we have a volume of 575,436 gallons. And we have a flow of 7 MGD. Now remember, they want it. you have to have it in gallons per day. So you need to go ahead and multiply 7 by a million, because it's a million gallons per day. And so you wind up with 7 million gallons per day. So gallons divided by gallons equals 0 0.08 days. So if they wanted detention time in days, we could stop right here. But they want it in hours. So we need to go ahead and multiply this by 24 hours per day. So 0 0.08 days times 24 hours per day should give you 1.9 hours. So let's say a gallon of water comes in, 1.9 hours later, it's going out. Assuming, of course, that uh, your tank isn't short-circuiting, which um, short-circuiting means that there's uh, some sort of opening within your tank that's allowing the water to come out earlier uh, because water will take the path of least resistance to get out of the tank. So uh, that, uh, that's why engineers need to make sure that the weirs are all level so that water won't be favoring exiting one side and uh, screwing up your detention time. So uh, a gallon of water is going to spend 1.9 hours in this tank before it leaves and goes on to the next treatment process or is discharged into your effluent. All right. Okay, so chlorine, uh, demand, dose, and residual. These are all super, 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 super simple uh, formulas. If you can do addition and subtraction, you can do these problems like the back of your hand. They are so easy. Second grade math right here. All right, so they want to find the dose. And dose is what you're feeding into uh, your contact chamber. Um, demand is how much the water is going to use and residual is uh, what is going to be left over. So you always need a residual to show that um, you've killed everything that uh, was creating a demand and you have chlorine left over. That means pretty much that you got a complete kill of uh, disease causing organisms in your effluent. So you dose, the demand sucks up a certain amount and you're left with a residual. So uh, this, this uh, effluent happens to have a demand of 9 milligrams per liter. So uh, 9 milligrams are going to be used um, when you uh, dose this water. So you need to make sure that you're at least dosing with a 10 because you have to have a residual. But the residual happens to be a 2 milligrams per liter. So the formula for dose is demand plus residual. It's what was consumed and what was left over. So if we go ahead and do demand, 9 milligrams per liter, plus our residual, 2 milligrams per liter, you should get 11 milligrams per liter. So this treatment plan is dosing chlorine at 11 milligrams per liter, 9 of it is being consumed, and 2 is left over. So very simple. Okay, so now we need to find residual. What was left over? We have a dose, and we have what is being consumed. So the formula for residual is dose, what we fed, minus the demand. 
what was consumed, and that'll give you what was left over. So if we go ahead and do that, dose is 14 milligrams per liter, minus 10 milligrams per liter demand, gives you a residual of 4 milligrams per liter. That's how much is left over. All right, now demand, what's going to be consumed by the water. So if we dosed it at 15, and there's two left over, how much was consumed? So dose minus residual will give you demand. So we fed 15, there's two left over. That means 13 milligrams per liter was consumed. That was the demand of this wastewater. Again, very simple formulas. Uh, these are the ones that you should be able to do with your eyes closed because of how easy they are. You just need to memorize the formulas. All right, we are overflow rate. This is how much water is going over your weirs of a clarifier uh, per linear foot of uh, weir length. So you need to find out how long your weir is and then uh, divide it into your flow. So uh, the formula for weir overflow rate is flow in gallons per day divided by your weir length in feet. Now, uh, remember what I said earlier, anytime you see diameter or circumference, that is a circle. And I use circles because they're the most common ones that they use because they're slightly harder than squares. So uh, to find a length, you need to find the circumference. Remember, diameter is, if you cut the circle in half, how long that line is. Circumference is the distance all the way around the circle. So you, so you need to find how long that weir is because it covers the entire circle. So uh, to find that, circumference equals 3.14, which is pi, times the diameter. And that'll give you how long it is around this circle in feet. So we go ahead and do 50 feet, which is our diameter, times 3.14, which is pi, and you wind up with 157 feet. So all the way around this circle is 157 feet. If I were to take this circle and lay it out straight, it would be 157 feet long. And that's the weir length. So we found the bottom part. So now we need the top part, flow in gallons per day. So they give us the flow in MGD, which is a million gallons per day, but we want gallons per day. So go ahead and multiply one by a million to get a million gallons per day divided by 157 feet, which is right all here, this is the formula, should give you 6,369 gallons per day per foot. So uh, one foot of weir in one day will have 6,369 gallons come over it. All right, let's move on.